All right, in this video, I'm going to be covering setting up OBS from start to finish, where you have a single camera layout like you see right now, and you also have this split third layout like you see here, where you're able to go through a gamma dock. All right, this is a question I get a lot, so let's get right into it. I'm going to start from just a completely blank slate here. I'm going to start up a brand new scene collection. Uh, I'll just call this Elias test and I'll reset everything into kind of defaults here. This is a blank canvas you should be staring at right now. If you've just installed OBS and uh, this is your first time using it, you probably see something like this. So what we're going to do first is we're going to set up some of our global sources. So like our microphone and our desktop audio because these will be present in all the scenes we build up. And then we'll build up our two scenes, the one with the full screen camera and the one with the document, the presentation on the right hand side of the screen. Now, when I talk about scenes versus sources, what is a scene and what is a source? A scene is how your recording is laid out. What will viewers see? So it's all the stuff that will be recorded. And inside of a scene, you will have sources. So these are stuff like webcam, screen capture, images, video, you can even put other scenes inside of scenes. So that's the difference between scenes and sources. Scenes is what your viewer sees, sources is all the stuff that goes into a scene. Sources is video stuff, sometimes it can be audio capture devices too, uh, that's another video though. But then we also have this audio mixer, we'll dive into the audio mixer in a little bit more detail in a moment. Uh, something else to keep in mind is OBS operates in two modes. Uh, the one we're looking at right now is considered the regular mode. And so when you switch between scenes, that switch will be immediate. Uh, if you're operating in studio mode, you'll have a preview and a program or your main output. So if you switch between scenes, you'll need to transition first. I'm going to leave this off of studio mode for simplicity. I like using studio mode for live streams and live event productions just because I'm used to it. But if you're just starting out, I would just keep things in regular mode. I'm going to assume two things here. You've got a webcam hooked up or something like a cam link plus like a DSLR or a camcorder. And you've got a microphone hooked up, either USB or an XLR mic that's hooked into a capture box. This tutorial will work for both of these. So, uh, one other note on Mac as well. Make sure on Mac that you have granted OBS permissions in the privacy and security in system preferences to use your microphone, to use your camera, and to use your screen capture. So before we set up our sources, we're going to set up our audio and video output, and we'll do this by coming into settings. We'll come into video first. This is the easier of the two settings to get done. You'll notice that there's four settings here, our base resolution, our output resolution, our downscale filter, and our frames per second. So this base and output resolution, this is how detailed your video is going to be. The higher the res, the more detailed your scene will be, but it will need more power from your computer. The common resolutions that I'll have listed here is 1280 by 720. And by the way, these are given in uh, width, and height. So it's 1280 pixels across by 10 or er, by 720 down. So 1280 by 720 is considered to be 720p or high definition, but I would say that's way too low these days. It looks awful when it's blown up on big screens. The next one up, 1920 by 1080 is my personal favorite. It is 1080p full HD. It's great for a lot of purposes. And quite frankly, a lot of people do not have great 4K displays or they're going to be watching your content on a phone anyway. The next one up is 3840 by 2160. This is 4K Ultra HD. I would only use this if you've got a 4K camera and a 4K monitor for whatever you're capturing. Otherwise, stuff's just going to look blurry. It's going to require a lot of power and you won't get much out of it. I prefer recording in 1920 by 1080. Uh, for FPS... You've got a couple choices here. I like going with 60 frames per second because you get a nice smooth uh, look to your movement whenever you're talking on camera. Uh, 30 and lower is for more of your cinematic look like you would see in the movies. When you move around, it'll look a little bit more blurry. 
I use 1080p and 60 frames per second. It's nice and smooth. It can be downscaled to smaller sizes without a big quality loss. If you find your recording and your computer just cannot deal with uh, 1080p at 60, bring it down to 30. It'll look fine. Next up, audio. We'll set up our audio. So the defaults up here that'll likely be selected on your computer, sample rate of 48 kilohertz and uh, stereo output, I would leave these alone. I would leave these alone. Uh, the OBS auto detects this stuff and it usually does a pretty good job of it. If you're recording and you're hearing a lot of noise, like digital noise or clicks and pops, then you may wanna tweak this to be 44.1, but I would leave it alone. The global audio devices. These are the audio capture that will show up in all of your scenes. By default, they're all disabled. I'm gonna set audio capture to be my default device. So, and your default device in your computer is pretty much whatever you're listening to me on right now. So if you're listening to me on your headphones, that's your default desktop audio output device. So this desktop audio and desktop audio two, this is audio output from your computer. So if you're, say you've got a gamma doc and you've got a video that you wanna play inside of that gamma doc and you want that to be part of the video you're recording in OBS, you want to be capturing that desktop audio. Another note though is that it will capture all desktop audio. So if you've got Discord notifications, if you've got Slack notifications, if you've got whatever notifications turned on, those sounds will play as part of your recorded video. So before you go and record, I would mute all your other sites, close pretty much everything else, and then do your recording or put it, put them all in Do Not Disturb. Otherwise, they'll be in your recording. There is nothing worse than doing your best take ever and in the middle of it, you hear a Slack notification. It's the worst. Next up, I'm gonna select my mic slash auxiliary audio. This is one where I like to pick the specific device. I don't like leaving it on default because if I plug in a different pair of headphones, if I plug in a new USB microphone, the default can change and you might not realize it. There's And again, there's nothing worse than recording an entire video and realizing you had the wrong microphone selected. So I'm gonna choose my audio box. This is my audio capture device as my mic slash auxiliary audio. All right, we're done in the settings and you'll notice now that desktop audio and mic slash aux now appear in my audio mixer. But take a look at mic slash aux. Notice how only one of these two bands is lit up when I'm talking. That is because on my audio, on my capture device, on my audio box, uh, it treats the first input as the left channel. So think of uh, the audio box has two capture ports, uh, one and two, left and right. So it's treating the audio box as, oh, you've only got one uh, source plugged in here. So I'm just gonna play everything out of the left-hand channel. So what I can come in here and do is right click on mic slash aux, hit uh, advanced, and then I'm gonna toggle mono on my mic slash aux input. That way it'll play the same thing on both the left hand and the right hand speakers. All right, cool. So now we've got that set to mono. For my desktop audio, I'm gonna bring that down quite a bit to about negative uh, 12 dB so that even when it gets loud, it doesn't overpower my voice. You may want to play with this if you're playing videos over top. You can also rename these sources. Right click on one, hit rename. I'm gonna rename this to main microphone. And then for desktop audio, I'm gonna leave that alone. So now we're ready to create our scenes. So again, our goal is to create two scenes. One is a full screen camera. One is document presentation on the right hand side of the screen. So we've got our default scene here. I'm going to rename this and I'm gonna call this uh, camera only. And then I'm gonna come into sources, right click, hit add, and I'm going to add a video capture device. And I'm gonna call this camera cam link. And I will select my cam link 4K and you can go along with the defaults here. OBS is usually good at picking, you know, just the highest quality uh, resolution and frame rate and everything. And so here we are. So my camera is now added to my scene. Now you might also be wondering, what are these white lines? I don't see these white lines on my instance of OBS. I've, in my settings, turned on 
the safe area. If you scroll down in settings under preview, you can check off this draw safe areas. Safe areas just gives you framing for where you can put titles safely in your video. And in general, you want to keep titles to about uh, roughly, you know, 80 to 90% within this, uh, where my mouse cursor is kind of bumping up against these uh, lines here. That's where you want to keep titles. Now, I brought in my cam link, but notice that uh, I've got a new audio source in my scene, which is my cam link. I do not want this audio source to be playing, so I'm going to mute it. And just for safety, I'm going to take the volume all the way down. That's because my camera has a built-in microphone, but it sounds like trash, so we're not going to use it. So that's our first scene set up. Now I'm going to add a second scene, and this will be my gamma presentation. So I'm going to add my camera. I'm going to right-click, add, and do video capture device. And then this time I'm going to add an existing. Now, what we want to do is have this camera on one-third of the screen and then have the, uh, have the presentation on the other two-thirds. So remember that we've got a 1920 by 1080 scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I want to have, I want to split my scene into three parts. So my camera is going to need to end up being 640 pixels wide. Now, how am I going to do that? I'm going to add a group, and I'm going to call this camera crop in my scene. And I'm going to drag my cam link into this. Then I'm going to right-click on camera crop and add a filter. The filter I'm going to add is a crop slash pad. And so what I want to do is I want to take two-thirds off of this picture right here. So I'm going to take 640 off the left, and I'm going to take 640 off the right. So now my camera is cropped to be just the inner 640. So I've now downsized this to take up a third. Why did I put this crop on the group rather than the camera, though? Well, if I come to the camera add a filter and add that crop uh, slash pad filter. I'll do that real quick here. And then I come back to my camera only. My camera only scene has that crop applied. So the filters travel with the source. So I don't want to put the filter on the source. I want to put it on the group that my source is in because I want to reuse the source across scenes. So I come back in here, camera crop, so 640, 640. So that crop was applied to the group, not the source itself. And so now I've got that nice uh, one third. Next, I am going to add in my display capture. And the display capture will add new. I'm going to select my main 4K display here because that's where I've got my gamma dock. I'm going to capture the cursor, because why not? And I'll hit OK. Now, you'll notice it's zoomed in on uh, OBS, and I've got this Hall of Mirrors effect going on. Well, that's because my display is a 4K display, not a 1080p display, and we're just uh, aimed at the upper left corner. What I'll do is I will drag uh, my display capture source until I get my gamma dock uh, in view. Now, here's something. You'll notice that my camera has disappeared. That's because this display capture is higher up in the sources list than my camera source. So I'm going to take my display capture and move it down. So anything, so anything at the top of the list, any source at the top of the list are going to appear above sources below it. So here we go. I'm adjusting this source. So what I'm doing here is dragging my display capture source around until the top left of the inside of my Chrome window is lined up with the top left of my uh, OBS uh, capture area. And so at this point, you might need to adjust your uh, gamma window just manually. That's what I'm doing here. I'm at the bottom left corner, just clicking and dragging to resize the window a little bit. Uh, but that's it. Now you're set up. The you know, last finishing touch that I like to put on is I'll add a color source. 
And I'll give this a width of, say, 60. Nah, not 40. 30. There we go. Nice and subtle. And I'll give it a, what, purple color, because purple is cool these days. And then I'll drag this over just to provide a nice dividing line between my gamma dock and my webcam. And notice that the color source is on top of, is above the camera crop, it's above the display capture, so it's above everything. Now you're pretty much ready to record, right? One last, one last idea to keep in mind. Under your settings, you might be wondering, where do I find my captured video? It'll be under output, go to recording, and set the recording path. On my computer, I'm recording to my uh, D drive video capture. Uh, and when you're setting your recording bitrate, make sure that bitrate's set at at least 8,000 kilobits per second so that you get some good quality. Uh, I'll go into more details. If you guys want, I'll go into more details on how to uh, set your bitrate and all that stuff for streaming as well. Uh, but that's it. Now you are ready to record your Gamma Docs. All you got to do is hit present on your Gamma Doc, and boom, we scroll through it and sell people on why you need to run webinars and events right now. If you're wondering why this is so gray and kind of looks bad right now, that's because I'm recording this tutorial using Loom instead of trying to record it using OBS at the same time. It's kind of hard to record OBS using OBS, I've discovered. Um, suppose I could do it with an, with an alternative setup, but that's for another day. Anyway, hope you found that useful. Um, this is a prototype for a potential OBS course. Let me know what you'd like more detail on, what you felt was useful, what you felt was uh, I might have gone too fast on. Interested to hear your feedback and what you'd like to see in the next round. Take care.